What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Guardian of Mankind Rhino Warrior. Their version of an oversized knockoff of the Hasbro Kingdom Rhinox. So the purpose of this, this was sent to me by G. Tony. Thanks for allowing me to take a look at this. And the purpose of this figure is really to fit in with a masterpiece scale. We don't have a masterpiece Rhinox. And I think this is kind of fitting the bill. Now, who knows if Takara will actually make a Masterpiece Rhinox, but this one does have a couple of changes compared to the original. So, number one, there is a bit more paint on this guy than there was on the original. But let me just point out the paint. You got this copper paint here. The teeth are painted. The face has that copper paint on as well. The eyes are painted red. This, even though it looks and has that kind of metallic sheen, it's just a plastic color. But you have the paint here on the toes. Silver paint here on the forearms and on the thighs, right there. Same paint here on the toes here. And then coming to the back, this is all just the plastic color, even though it looks like paint, this is actually plastic color. And then you have, actually it's a, it's not eyes, or it's, it's not painted eyes, it's translucent. So he does have a little translucent plastic there. As far as articulation, it's pretty much the same, but I think you get a little bit uh, different joint here at the hip you get a you get a ratchet but the head goes up and down like this you do get a side to side movement and rotates all the way around so that's on a ball joint the shoulders rotate around on this joint it is nice and tight everything's really nice and tight it's all tension other than the hip you have a butterfly joint here on the shoulders you can get in and out you get a reverse butterfly using this piece here you have a rotation at the elbow 90 degree end at the elbow just due to the sculpt. Nothing here at the wrist. You have a rotation at the waist, although it's a little bit limited due to the sculpt. No ab crunch or anything like that. You can move this out of the way if you prefer. You can have kind of the look. Now they changed the mouth. It looks a little bit different. It's got just that same copper color. So if you're trying to recreate that look where he's got the tongue behind his head, and shout out to T-Man for uh, mentioning that. Um, you can kind of do it, but it doesn't look quite like the original cartoon, but close enough. Continuing down, you have a ratchet at the hip. It goes up to there, back to there, out to the side on friction, a rotation at the mid-thigh at a cut joint, double jointed knee gets you the full bend, and you have ankle tilt, and a pivot back and forth, and everything's nice and tight. I believe the hips were not ratcheted before. I, I gotta go back and watch my own review. But um, other than that, I think everything is still tension and all the same articulation as the original figure. Now, as far as accessories, you get two sets of weapons. So you get these, which are the original weapons, just upscaled. It does have silver paint here and then gunmetal in the middle. These don't spin. These will fit into his hands. And I think people kind of thought, hey, you know, these are kind of small, you know, not very intimidating for, for a Rhinox character. They just look kind of wimpy. Um, and by the way, these can still fit together like they could on the original. And this can be stored inside his beast mode in the back legs. But if you prefer, they give you these big ones now. These actually spin and they're painted pretty much the same way except they've got this black here. So you got a little bit of additional detail and it does look nicer. I do think these are better looking. Obviously these won't fit in his Rhino mode. So I guess that's why they gave the other ones, but this is definitely more intimidating. This is kinda, this looks like he can do some damage, you know? Um, and his shoulder or his uh, elbows are a little bit weak, but the good news is they're on screws. So let me tighten those screws and see if that will help him hold these weapons a little bit better. Right, there you go. He can hold it nice and tight now. So you might need to adjust some screws here. Now, to be perfectly transparent, this figure came with two screws missing. Um, right here and right here. And actually, that holds the entire figure together. Uh, during my unboxing, which was a members-only uh, video, I showed that this came in the box separated into two pieces. I just had to find two screws. I put it in there. It, it fit together fine, but that's kind of the kind of stuff you can expect when you get a KO. Just, you know, the, the QC, not necessarily done the best. But 
now that I've tightened those screws and I put the screws into there, everything works. Um, but just know you may need to do a little bit of uh, housework on this guy when you get him. And for a quick size comparison, there it is next to the Takara Tomy Masterpiece Optimus Primal. We'll turn his eyes on there. And it looks really good. I like the size of it. It's a nice height and just overall just bulk. And I don't know if this is to scale, but I think it fits in nicely if you have a Masterpiece Beast War shelf and you're trying to get this character taken care of. All right, so now let's get this guy transformed into his beast mode. And um, the upper body is actually pretty easy, but the lower body, especially these legs, are a pain. They're just, they were a pain with the original and they're a pain with this one, but let's get to it. Go ahead and pull the chest down, fold this chest panel together, and that's gonna fit right back into his chest. These arms are going to come to the inside, open this up, and you can fold the hand in, and then close that back up. Rotate the arm so you get the leg looking like this, and then rotate the leg up and out like that. Same on this side, open this up, fold the hand in, close that up, rotate the hand, bring this up. Now we can take care of the backpack, so pull this up and away, and this can actually come all the way down. And we want to rotate the head 180 degrees, and then this is going to come down and cover that head. Uh, but don't close it all the way because we got to sh close these uh, shoulder panels. So these are going to rotate up, and then end up underneath the head, so that it covers down. Now you can close the head all the way down. All right. Next we'll take care of this monstrosity down here. We can actually fold these out for now and out of the way. Because those are going to end up as part of this. Alright, so let's do this. So come here, open this up. And we want to bend the knee 90 degrees. That allows us to take this, open that up. And we're going to take this piece here. That's going to come out and peg in right there. I don't know why they made this piece green. It should have just been the same color, but for whatever reason they made it different. Lift up this foot, rotate it, and then pull that up. You'll notice there's no more waffles. They've made a complete leg. And that's actually a nice little upgrade because I hate it. I hate when they do waffles on these legs. But both the front and rear legs, no more waffles. So that's great. All right, so continuing on. We want to get... Um, this foot ends up on the underneath the backpack, so rotate this up, rotate this in, and then it's going to tab in right here. So just get that plugged in right there like that. And then this is going to uh, close down after we get this situated, but this foot is going to end up underneath this. And rotate this up, get that to fit right under there. Then you can get these panels sort of plugged in right here. This is on a rotating joint this way. This is going to come down and sit like this. This is probably the most annoying part. You do have to bend the plastic a little bit and that's the same as the original design. Believe it or not, that's how Hasbro made it. All right, get that plugged in. And that's basically one leg down. So we're going to do the same thing. Hopefully I can repeat the process without messing it up. So come to the front, open this panel, bend the knee 90 degrees. I like to take this and open it up. You have to do it in this sequence, otherwise things don't work. Open this up, open this up, plug this into here. Rotate the foot or the leg out. Rotate this and then get it situated like that. Take this foot, rotate it up, in, and then tab it in like that. Come to the back here and fit this underneath here. This is going to rotate out. Again, you got to bend the plastic a little bit to get it plast there. And these are both going to fit, end up fitting underneath here. But this has to actually come underneath, or around this. All right now we got it. So this can come together and tab together. And then I lost this. So. Have that together. Bring this back and tab that in underneath here. It actually is pretty secure, to be honest. This plastic is really thick, just like those Sharktacon figures that we got, the oversized ones. This is very 
thick, sturdy, nice plastic. Bring this down, bring this down. And there you have Rhino Warrior in beast mode. Pretty good looking. They did a nice quality sheen on this plastic. It's not painted even though it looks like it is. Um, this is a little bit of softer plastic, but again, because it has a different co base color to the plastic, it does stand out and looks good. Little translucent eyes there. Here's the back. I have no idea why they made this plastic green. On the original, it was just brown. It just fit right in. Now it's got he's got a butt crack that's that's green. At least just make the tail green or make the whole thing brown. But because of this, it looks really strange. But it's fine. I guess you're not looking at it from there. For articulation, the head can go up and down just a scooch. You can't open the mouth, and you can see those teeth. That looks pretty good, but there's a little bit of movement on the head. For the shoulders, you can go back and forth. It can pop out like this and get them on a wider stance or whatever. The feet don't really pose. I mean, you can bend it here, but then he looks like, <laughs> it just looks a little weird, but you can kind of get it posed so the feet are flat on the ground. Back legs, really not much. You, you can back and forth. Again, this is the same as the original design. Back and forth like that, a little bit in and out, but really not too much there. But And again, for the size comparison, there it is next to the Masterpiece Optimus Primal. And it fits in nicely. It's a nice big alt mode here for Rhinox. So final recommendations on the Guardian of Mankind Rhino Warrior. I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5, which is a partial recommendation. And uh, the reason is, so number one, I did have to fix it out of box. I had to put a couple screws. I had to find a couple screws and then put it into that waist. I also mentioned there's a couple of joints that are here that are there that you might have to tighten, like these arms. Uh, then there's some other joints that might be too tight. You might have to loosen. Um, that's to be expected with a KO, but that's why it's a partial recommendation. It is a KO after all. Um, I do like the new bigger weapons here. That's kind of cool. That kind of adds to the display factor of this. Um, but the number one selling point for this guy is he fits in with the Masterpiece Beast Wars line. And it just kind of fills a spot. And that's why it's a partial recommendation. It's really just kind of a spot filler for now until we actually get either a third party or official Masterpiece Rhinox. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks to G Tony for sending this for review. And we'll see you next time.